The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's get on to Gildersleeve and see what he's up to. It seems to be about 11 o'clock at night, an hour at which, in Summerfield, the citizens have generally heard the last radio program and brushed their teeth, opened their bedroom windows, a discreet crack, and gone to bed. This, in fact, is what Gildersleeve has done. But he'll have trouble going to sleep. He is annoyed. Darn kid. Give her a good talking to in the morning. Gallivanting around at all hours. I wonder where she is. Where is Marjorie? At this moment, she is with friends. She is sitting in the front seat of a hopped-up jalopy, or hot rod with a young man named Jerry Walsh, who is driving, more or less. In the back seat are a young lady named Francie and a young man named Mike something or other. The whole thing sounds something like this. Oh, Richard, open the door and let me in. Open the door, Richard. Richard, why don't you open the door? This is a place, isn't it, Marge? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to wake up the whole block? Oh, what do we care? Anybody asleep now is a square. Jerry, please, the house is dark. They're all asleep. Sorry, Marge, I couldn't stop it. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, Marjorie. So long, Marge. I'll go to the door with you. Uh, see you tomorrow night, Marge? I don't know. What's going on? Oh, we'll cook up something. What? Oh, something. Maybe just the two of us, huh? Just the two of us? Come on, open the door, Richard. Let the lady in there. They're so smart. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? I haven't got my key. Oh, gosh, what do you do about that? I'll have to ring and wake him up. You better beat it, Jerry. He'll be awful mad when he comes down. Well, I'm not afraid of him. You're not? Well, just the same, it'll be easier if you're not just standing here with me. Well, okay, Marge, whatever you say, but if he gets tough... You better go. Marge. Please go, Jerry. I think I hear him coming. You do? Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. Night, Marge. Open the door, Margie. Yeah, open the door, Margie. Oh, go away. Well, Marjorie? I'm sorry, Unky. I thought I had a key. Oh. Stop that racket out there. Come in before I freeze to death. Now, I do not propose to discuss your conduct at this time, young lady. Decent people like myself have been trying to get some sleep. I'm sorry, Yankee. As the person who is responsible for your welfare, I need sleep. I'm sorry, Yankee. Well, you'll be sorry in the morning. You'll be... Let me smell your breath, young lady. What for? Well, lucky thing for you, you haven't been smoking. Now go to bed. <laughs> Boiled eggs and three, four pieces of toast. Think they'll carry you? I guess so. Thank you, Bertie. Gosh, where's Marge? She'll be late. I expect she's getting a little extra rest, Leroy. She didn't get home till the middle of the night. She and some gang of roughnecks hollering and yelling out there in the street after 12 o'clock. I didn't hear a thing. You're subnormal. <laughs> Sounds like they're having a lot of fun out there. Oh, they wake you up, Bertie? No, sir, I was awake. Well, I heard him out there talking and laughing. Sounds like a lot of fun. That's not the sort of fun we approve, Bertie. No, sir. 
Sound like fun all the same. You know how young folks is, Miss Kilsey. Not necessarily. Yes, sir. It's graceful riding around on some kid's motorcycle, backfiring and yelling. Motorcycle? It was probably a hot rod. What? A hot rod. They take a jalopy and hop it up. Well, it makes more noise than anything else. Well. Good morning, Yankee. Hi, Marge. I trust you enjoyed your night's repose, Miss Forrester? I slept all right. Oh, you did. Well, it might interest you to know that after I went back to bed, I didn't sleep a single wink the rest of the night. I'm sorry. Had bad dreams, too. <laughs> Can I have some breakfast? Be right in, Miss Marjorie. Now, who was with you last night making all that noise? Francie and Jerry and Mike. Mike was Francie's date. And Jerry was yours. Jerry who, may I ask? Jerry Walsh. We were in his car. I told you, Uncle. That's Jerry's hopped up Ford. That will do. Marjorie, I believe I've spoken to you before about that Walsh boy, have I not? I have a definite impression he's fast. I'll say he's the fastest guy on the basketball team. Leroy. <laughs> I'm talking to your sister. You stay out of this. Marjorie, have I or have I not spoken to you about young Walsh? I don't know. You're always speaking to me about somebody. My dear young lady, you may find it very tiresome, but I'm your guardian. I have a responsibility for your friends. There's nothing the matter with Jerry. I don't know his father. Oh, what of it? I suppose I couldn't go around with the, the Prince of Wales if you didn't know the king. You're being impertinent. You won't go around with the Prince of Wales either unless I say so. <laughs> Morning, Miss Marjorie. Good morning, Bertie. You sure you don't want something extra for breakfast, honey? No, thank you, Brady. What's this? Orange juice and a half a piece of toast? That's all I want. Well, of all the... She's reducing. Leroy, you... What's were... this? What's this? What did you say, Leroy? Nothing. Well, by George, young lady, you may think you're big enough to ride around in cars and come in at all hours. But if you've taken up reducing, that's the limit. Reduce what, for heaven's sake? You haven't got anything to reduce. <laughs> I consider this a personal matter. Personal, my eye. As your guardian, I'm also responsible for your health. Bring her some bacon and eggs, Bertie. Yes, sir. But I don't want them. Bring her some bacon and eggs. I'd like to remind you, Marjorie, that while you may consider yourself grown up, as a matter of fact, you're still a little girl. I'm 16. It'll be five years before you can vote. In the meantime, I want you in bed every night at 10 o'clock. Do you understand? Unky. I mean it. 10 o'clock, lights out, no boys hanging around. Auntie. I still mean it. Oh, for corn's sake. You stay out of this. <laughs> I think you mean it horrible. <laughs> found, found it. There must be some way to handle this. Marjorie. Marjorie. Perhaps I was a little harsh just now. But don't you see I'm trying to look out for your own good? Older people know things that you haven't been able to learn yet. I've learned them in the hard school of experience. I'm just trying to save you from heartaches, that's all. You don't know anything. <laughs> My dear, I'll take back the punishment. About being in at 10 o'clock. What about the boy? Well, I'll take that back, too. I'm weak, I guess. But for your own sake, can't you find someone nicer than this Walsh boy? What about Ben Waterford? Now, there's a nice boy. Why don't you see him anymore? Ben's all right, only... I don't know. He's not very exciting. Exciting boys are no good, my dear, in the long run. Ben is a fine, manly boy. What's the matter with Ben? He never can think of anything to do. Except go to the movies. Well, what's the matter with that? And when you get to the movies, he... Well, he just watches the movies. My dear. <laughs> oh, I just mean he never talks or anything. He never can think of anything to say. Well, uh, <clears throat> still water runs deep, Marjorie. Deep? He's just dull. He never... Go on, Val. It's quarter to nine. That's Francie calling for me. Leroy, you let her in. Your sister's got to eat something. Okay. Do I look as if I've been... No, no one would ever guess it. Hi, Francie, come on in. Marge is finishing breakfast. It's late. 
Get going, Marge. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Francie. How's your mother? She's fine, thank you. Father, get over that cold, all right? Oh, yes. He went back to the office yesterday. I hope we didn't disturb you last night bringing Marjorie home. Well, I know how young folks are. <laughs> Leroy, <laughs> you may run along to school. Okay. So long, Marge. So long, Francie. Hey, Marjorie, I need my coat for <laughs> Have a chair, Francie. As I was saying, I think I understand, young people. But I was just asking Marjorie why she didn't see more of Ben Waterford. I think he's a fine boy, don't you? Oh, sure. Ben's all right. But he's so dull. He never can think of anything to do. The movies. That's just what I was telling Unky. There's just nothing exciting about him. Oh, that's funny. What funny? Well, I'm only telling you this because maybe you ought to know. But Ben says the same thing about you. What? He says you're all right, but not very exciting. Well, of all the nerve. Who did he say this to? Louise. He's been going around with her lately. She told me, and I thought as a friend. That... Thanks, Francie. Well, I saw them a couple of times in the library, but I never thought, Louise. And he says I'm dull. Well, I'll show Mr. Ben who's dull. Uh, Marjorie, uh... I suppose he thinks I'm just a quiet little mouse or something. Well, he'll find out. Well, Marjorie, I think all he said was that you were conventional. Conventional? That's the worst of all. I'll show him. I'll go out with Jerry Walsh tonight. And... Where's my coat? Marjorie, a breakfast? I've eaten all I can stand. I'll go out with Jerry tonight. And don't worry, Unky. I'll have a key this time. If I come home at all... Marjorie! <laughs> now what am I going to do? <laughs> We'll get back to the great Gildersleeve and his problem in just a minute. Isn't it amazing how a little extra something added to your favorite recipe can give it a lot more appetite appeal? That's certainly true, Mr. Lang. We women are always looking for simple, new ways to improve our meals. Well, if that's the case, I'll bet you'd like something I saw tried in the craft kitchen recently. It's a simple recipe to make biscuits better with just two easy tricks. Did you say two easy tricks? Yes, and they're both very simple. The first trick is to add Kraft grated cheese to your regular biscuit mix. That's an extra something that lifts them out of the ordinary. The second trick is even simpler. It's to serve these luscious cheese biscuits with delicious, flavor-fresh parquet margarine to make them taste extra good. Parquet's fresh, country sweet flavor is preferred by millions for biscuits, bread, pancakes, and waffles. So for all those favorite breads you bake or buy, insist on the margarine of craft quality. Look first when you shop for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Now let's return to the Great Gildersleeve. We'll have to follow him to Peavy's Pharmacy. A little lemon, a teaspoon of soda, half a glass of hot water every morning without fail. That's how I avoid colds. <coughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Peavy, tell me something. Does a boy named Jerry Walsh ever come in here? Uh, yes, quite frequently. I thought so. But then so do most of the boys. Why? I haven't got any use for him. That's so? Why? I haven't got any use for the kind of boy who hangs around drugstores. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Your own nephew has been known to come in here. That's different. In fact, he seems to do a good part of his reading here. Right on the floor there in front of my magazine rack. <laughs> well, I'll speak to him about that. But right now, I'm talking about this Walsh boy. Why are you suddenly interested in Jerry Walsh? I'm not. It's my niece. Oh. What kind of a boy is he, Peavy? It sounds to me as if you'd already made up your mind. Not at all. I'm perfectly willing to be open-minded. I just don't like the fellow, that's all. Oh. Oh. But you say he comes in here all the time. You must have some idea. What's he like? Well, it's hard to say. I'd say he's a good deal like other boys. 
Well, that's no help. Well, they come in here and they sit around three or four of them usually and drink Cokes. I thought so. I will say he seems a little free with his money. Oh, a waster. I thought as much. Well, I wouldn't call it that. It seems to be more a spirit of generosity. He's the one who usually offers to pay for the drinks. And the others usually let him. So I know the type. A good time, Charlie. Those fellows don't fool me. What else do you know about him? Well, I hear he had a little bad luck yesterday. I hear he had his driver's license taken away from him. Well, it's about time. Why, George, I'm glad to hear that. The way these kids go tearing around in these collapses or whatever they call them. There ought to be a law. I can go on with you there. Had his license taken away, huh? Serves him right. Now, why can't Marjorie just stick to a nice boy like Ben Waterford? You don't catch Ben whooping around town, hollering and backfiring at all hours of the night. Well, I don't believe Ben even owns a car, does he? That's one of the nicest things about it. But this Jerry... Uh, George, I'm glad they clipped his wings. Serves him good and right. Serves who good and right? Well, if it isn't Floyd Munson. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commissioner. Give us a pack of Fatimas, Peavy. That's a good kid. Well, Commissioner. Well, Floyd. You're getting a little shaggy around the ears there. I ought to be seeing you in a couple of days. I have more on my mind than just my hair, Floyd. Ha! Huh. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. He must have been listening to the radio, Peeve. He don't just think up them smart cracks by himself. <laughs> Floyd, you know a boy named Jerry Walsh? Jerry Walsh? Yeah, play center on the basketball team. Pops his hair in the middle. Sure, I know him. What do you think of him? Good kid. You would. What's the matter with him? A little family difficulty. He thinks he's got difficulty. Don't ever have a niece, Floyd. Uh, don't ever have a wife. Huh, Peeve? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, Floyd. What's the matter, Commissioner? The niece getting ideas? She was born with ideas. She won't listen to anybody else's. I can't do a thing with her. Commissioner, that's the story of my life. Me and Lovey. It's the story of mankind. What's that, Peeve? <laughs> Nothing. Yep, it's like I say, they're all the same. Wife, niece, sweetheart, mother-in-law. They'll really lead you a chase if you let them. Well, how do you stop them? You gotta know how. Well, how? Pay no attention to them. That burns them up worse than anything. That's not what I'm after, exactly. Like with me and Lovey. I come home at night, and right away I see she's in one of her mean streaks. I ain't hardly in the door, and she sticks her jaw out and says, I think I'll have Mom over for the weekend. Well... Now, in the old days, I would have given her an argument. Not anymore. I got smart. Well, what do you do? Commissioner, she don't want the old... She don't want her mom over any more than I do. <laughs> she just wants to start a fight. Well, I don't give her the satisfaction. She gets no arguments from me. When lovey starts up with me like that, all I do, I yes her to death. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I says. Invite her over. Glad to see her. Have your pop over, too. Send for the whole family. Tell them to stay a couple of months. Glad to have them. <laughs> Floyd, you're an old rascal. Well, I ain't so dumb. And it works? Like a charm. You can write it down in your book, Commissioner. When a dame is in one of them moods, anything you say, she's going to do the opposite. Is that right, Peavy? Floyd, it seems to be. You know, you fellas have given me a new slant. Yes, sir, by George. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> picture, I must say. Hi, huh? Leroy at his school books, Marjorie at hers, nobody fighting, quite a treat. <laughs> How does it happen, my dear, that you're not off with your friend Jerry? Cat got our tongue? Too bad. Leroy, perhaps you can take time out from your studies to answer your old uncle. Sure, what do you want to know? Yeah, nothing in particular. I'll just hang up my things here first. Well, Leroy... Quite a treat having our sister at home here with us in the evening, isn't it? We've seen so little of her lately. Are you kidding? I suppose it's too much to hope that she'll honor us by staying to supper. Lost in her studies. We must be careful not to disturb her, Leroy. By the way, I heard a very sad piece of news this afternoon, Leroy. Very sad. Concerns Jerry Walsh. You recall Jerry Walsh, a friend of your sister's, I believe. What's going on here, anyway? It seems, Leroy, that young Master Waltz has had his driver's license taken away from him. Very sad. Won't be able to drive anymore. All right. You think you're very smart, Uncle Mort. 
But it might just interest you to know this. I'm sticking by, Jerry. I'm sticking by him through thick and thin. And the more trouble he gets into, the more I'll stick by him. I think that's very commendable. What? <laughs> I like to see loyalty in a girl. I think you should stick by him. Well, I will. Well, you should. All right, I will. What goes wrong here? After all, the poor boy has been unfairly deprived of his license. He needs sympathy. Maybe he did knock over a few fire hydrants. Is that any reason to take his license away from him? Uncle Mort, you may think you're joking, but I'm not. I like Jerry Walsh. I like him very much. Good. Then I think you should marry him. What? Oh, Uncle Mort, really? I mean it. Marry him right now, why don't you? Now, tonight, or tomorrow at the latest. For two cents, I would. Elope, why don't you? I'll help you. I'll make all the arrangements. Leroy will help, too. Yeah, I'll hold the letter. You both think you're very funny, don't you? Mr. Gilfrey, it's all ready. You want to carve the roast at the table, or you want me to hack it up out in the kitchen? It, Bertie, please. Yes, This is a very solemn moment, Bertie. Let's not talk of food. Oh, don't listen to him, Bertie. <laughs> She's nervous, that's all. And only natural. You see, our little bird is about to fly the coop. Huh? Marge is getting married, aren't you, Marge? What? <laughs> Bertie, shh. It's very secret. They're eloping. I'm not even supposed to know. Only I'm helping them. <laughs> is everybody crazy around here? Yes. Now, what I want you to do, Bertie, I want you to run up to Marjorie's room and pack a bag for her. Everything she'll need to elope with. That will not be necessary. I'll pack it myself. Hey, wait. Let her go. Hey, you're going to let her do it, huh? Don't you worry. Your old uncle knows what he's doing. Yeah? I wonder. <laughs> I guess you can clear the table if you want to, Bertie. It appears that Marjorie will not be down. Mr. Gilsey, if you don't mind me saying so, seems like you're kind of putting your foot in it, if you don't mind me saying so. Why do you say that? That ain't no way to treat a girl the way you're doing. Bertie, when a girl gets notions in her head, there's only one thing to do. Kid her out of it. You could kid her into it. <laughs> that shows how much you know. As long as I keep urging her, Bertie, she'll never in the world go through with it. I guarantee it. That's the way girls work. It is. Anybody knows that. Mr. Gillsleeve, let me ask you one question. Hmm? Was you ever a girl? <laughs> <laughs> now, Bertie, you just leave everything to me. Quiet, here comes Marge. Well, my dear, already, I see. I suppose Jerry will be along any minute. Have you called him? I think you ought to call him, don't you? I'll call him when I get good and ready. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Gilfrey. Got to call her bluff, Bertie. It's the only way. Oh, Miss Marjorie, couldn't you eat just a little something? Yes. Better have a bite before you go, my dear. You're a long time married, you know. I'm not hungry, thank you. Well, she's just excited. You can't blame her. Girl just about to be married. <laughs> Your overcoat's on the hall table. Don't forget it when you go. Thanks a lot. Hey, what's that? What? That noise. What the... I told you, Mr. Gilfrey. I don't care. She'll never go through it. Well, there he is, my dear. His car's outside. Mustn't keep him waiting. No time to say goodbye, I guess. Better just run along. Write to us if you get a chance. Well, aren't you going? All right, I will. Marjorie. Marjorie, come back here. Marjorie, I didn't mean it, Marjorie. Please, please, come back. Let go of me. Don't go, my dear. Please. Oh, Marjorie. Oh, Anki. My dear, you wouldn't leave your old uncle. I thought you were going to make me. I'm nothing but a big, fat fool. Don't ever leave us, will you? Never, never. Don't ever listen to a single word I say. <laughs> oh, here comes Jerry. Yes, better blow your nose. You got a handkerchief. Yeah, we're here. Hi, Marge. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. It isn't Jerry, it's Ben. Hi. Ben. Ben, my boy. How are you? Glad to see you. Hi, George. You're a sight for sore eyes. How are you, anyway? Uh, I'm all right. But, Ben, where'd you get the car? I thought it was... I mean, it's just like... Where'd you get it? Oh, I borrowed it from a fella. He wasn't going to be using it for a few months, so we made a deal. Would you like to take a ride? Would I? 
All right, where would you like to go? I don't know. Where would you like to go? I don't care. Where would you like to go? <laughs> it makes no difference to me. Where would you like to go? Wherever you'd like to go. <laughs> well? Would you... Would you want to go to the movies? Oh, Ben, I just love to. In the movies. <laughs> that is, if it's all right with you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, take her, my boy, and God bless you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Shall we go, Marge? Good night, Auntie. Mm. Uh, good night, my dear. Have you forgiven your old uncle? Forgiven you? It was all my fault. No, it wasn't. It was mine. No, it wasn't. It was mine. All right, it was yours. No, it wasn't. It was yours. (laughs) (laughs) Run along now. Let's hurry, Dad. We want to make the first show. We'll play, you know. Something called Boy's Ranch. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, Little Marjorie. Going to the movies with her fella. At least it isn't that Jerry. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Your menu for breakfast may change from day to day because all of us like variety and foods. But whether you have toast, sweet rolls, pancakes, or waffles, I'm sure you'll agree it's the spread that makes them taste extra good. And that's why so many homemakers look first for parquet margarine. It's so fresh and country sweet in flavor. So delicious in all those favorite hot breads you serve for breakfast or any other meal of the day. Parquet margarine is wonderfully nourishing, too. High in food energy and fortified with 15,000 units of important vitamin A in every single pound. So, for a quality spread for bread that's high in good nourishment, rich in good flavor, look first for Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. Good morning, Judge. Come in. Sit down. Have a prune. Bertie, go coddle an egg for the judge. No, no. Nothing for me, thank you. I've already breakfasted. Well, sit down anyway. You can watch me eat. Uh, what's on your mind, Horace? You look like the devil. Bad night last night. Bad night. Oh, well, I slept like a baby myself. Well, I might have if some young maniac hadn't come tearing down my street in the middle of the night with his cutout wide open. Enough to wake the dead. <laughs> You won't think it's so funny, perhaps, when I tell you that he had a girl in the car with him, and the girl was none other than your niece, Marjorie. Well, aren't you going to say something? Are you going to let your niece tear around at all hours of the night, raising Ned and disturbing the peace? Judge, I pray heaven that I may never be so, so dried up, so forgetful of my own youth, that I would want to rob children of their fun. Well. (laughs) Good morning, Judge. Good night, folks. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Earl Ross as Judge Hooker, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. Stay tuned in now for Duffy's Tavern. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Chocolate, strawberry, pineapple, even coffee, ice cream. Make any kind you like right in your own refrigerator or home freezer. It's easy with frizz. Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z, is the new craft product that gives you delicious satin smooth ice cream rich with plenty of milk and cream. For vanilla, all you do is add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Flavor variations are simple. Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor. Be sure to ask for Frizz. Six generous servings from one small package. NBC, the national broadcasting company.